Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I'm Joe, he's Nick, and you are listening to The Nick and Joe Show on thinkradio.ca, coming to you live from the Think Radio Broadcast Centre in Canada's national capital. And I am here in the studio, and Nick is in the studio with me. Hurrah! And he's looking right at me as he says that intro, thinking out loud, ingrain this in your brain. (laughs) I just just do it too. You know, it's funny because we used to do the old uh, uh, combat combat zone zone or whatever they would call it. Uh, I could never, never get the intro right where the I, en- would, I would write it down and still read it wrong. where the enemy has nothing to say but three things bail out abandon ship and i surrender yeah yeah bail out abandon ship and i surrender and uh yeah those were the good old days when we weren't afraid to use machine gun music <laughs> oh. but now but now and we're and much more genteel than we're that now. zen we are we uh, are so calm, um, cool, and collected. Um. <laughs> okay, enough of that crap. Thank there you. Because I was going to suggest the same thing. All right, that's All right. enough Zen for that for one show. Okay, yeah, too much. And and, and I'm not Zen tonight anyway, Nick. I'm All not right. Zen tonight, and I'll tell you why, okay? Because in uh, what I can only describe as a short-sighted and colossal mistake, an example of political, dare I even use the word ineptitude, the Conservative Party leadership, Federal Conservative Party leadership, decides that they want to kick former leadership candidate Derek Sloan out of caucus. So they decide, this is uh, on Tuesday... And Wednesday morning, they have a caucus meeting, and the leader, Aaron O'Toole, uh, puts the question to the caucus, which he's required to do. Uh, and they had a an hours-long, my understanding from insiders, people who I've spoken to who were there, is that it was a ruckus caucus meeting. Uh, and uh, But in the end, by secret ballot, ballot they decided to eject Derek Sloan from the conservative federal conservative party caucus. Uh, and their justification for doing this. Okay. Everybody sit down, relax and wait for it. There's a fellow by the name of Paul from who hasn't done much in the last, Oh, least a decade, maybe two, but he has a, allegedly, Okay, let's cover ourselves legally here, okay, Nick? He's allegedly been involved in neo-Nazi activities. And he allegedly holds neo-Nazi slash white supremacist points of view. Anyway, I don't know where he's been for 20 years. I I, I know about him. Uh, Some people out there and our listeners might have heard of him. My guess is that most haven't. Anyway, so this... Paul from writes a check or sends a donation by credit card. I don't know to Derek Sloan's leadership campaign of $131. (laughs) Now understand ladies and gentlemen, Derek Sloan raised about $1.3 million in his leadership campaign. And if you know how these things go, okay. I mean, you don't pay attention to this stuff. Sometimes people make donations to these campaigns through the party porthole as a directed contribution and, uh, you know, I, I, I've run these campaigns before myself. Uh, and, uh, you know, you get once a week or, you know, perhaps once a day, depending on the volume of donations that come in, you'll get a report from the party, you know, with the names and that. And your your official agent will look at them, you know, just a perfunctory glance at the names on the list, etc. And that's the end of it. Anyway, I don't know how Derek discovered who this person was but whenever he discovered who this person was he did the right thing he informed party headquarters of the donation and he requested that the donation be returned to that person he didn't want to accept it okay along comes this left wing and i i should have the name of the publication in front of me i i don't um but it's a, it's a it's a pretty far out there left wing slash progressive publication uh, today, or not today, but on Tuesday, uh, decides to make known 
that this Paul from alleged former neo-Nazi gave this donation to Eric Sloan, Derek Sloan. And the next thing we know, the leader of the party is saying, I don't tolerate racism in this party and uh, we, we're going to ha- we're going to have to eject Sloan from the party because of the fact that he accepted this donation. So the whole thing, you know, the, the case against Derek Sloan, to say that it's paper thin is to give it too much credibility, okay? No case here whatsoever. I'm an active person, a member of the conser- Federal Conservative Party, and I, I really regret that the, that the leadership team and the leader is putting me in a position where I have to go up publicly and say, dumb move. For a lot of reasons. First of all, it's not just, it's not fair. And I like to think that we are, or at least we used to be, the party of law and order. But apparently not. Apparently the rules don't count, following rules don't count. And, you know, I'm not going to get into a a repetition of my experience uh, as campaign manager for a, a previous leadership candidate who also had his problems with a an unjust uh, and manipulative party leadership. Not the current party leadership, but a previous, previous party leadership, okay? So, you know, I'm, I'm just healing. This. I have the scars from that battle. So along comes Aaron O'Toole, and he, and he does the same thing, okay? Somewhat different circumstances. Accusations are, 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 are somewhat different, but still... Uh, you know, we're supposed to be a law and order party. Yeah, but what this looks like to the average viewer or listener or consumer of this kind of thing, this is just another, uh, they were looking for an excuse, any excuse at all, to get rid of another socially conservative voice in that party. Oh, okay. And he's made it very clear that people with that added, with that worldview, with the SOCON view, have no place in the Conservative Party of Canada. Okay, well, I, there are still a lot of SOCONs that they haven't gotten rid of. Well, and, and so- that's because they are very low profile, weren't uh, leadership contenders, and aren't a threat. Okay, th- that, that's a, f- and a lot of people have said that. And and I'm not arguing the point. I I, yeah. I I think that that's probably one of the reasons. But having said that, okay, two things. First of all, there's where the colossally stupid thing politically is because you cannot – social conservatives may be a minority in this country, but they're a large enough co- uh, a group that you can't win as a conservative party. You can't win in a federal election without – social conservatives supporting you unless you want to completely go over to the left and fight it out with the liberals and the NDP for that pool of supporters and abandon everybody on the right. So uh, it's, it's a serious miscalculation, I think, and an indication once again of, of the very shallow and pedestrian political analyses that go on uh, right now within the conservative party. And I regret having to say that because I, I I actually like Aaron O'Toole. I'm going to surprise some people by saying that, but he's you know he's a decent guy. He um, may be in City Street, but you know, when you're the leader of a major political party, that doesn't matter. You have to lead with some form of leadership skill. You have to be able to read the tea leaves. You need to have ethics and morals that people can count on. And obviously, that is not part of his makeup when he's in that leadership chair. So here's the, but here's the really, assuming that what you're saying, that what you're suggesting is true, and that the real agenda here is to set an example, get rid of a, of a, of a vocal SOCON, and set an example that's going to intimidate those social conservatives who remain in the caucus. Right. Very plausible. But if you're going to do that with a guy like Derek Sloan, you can't do that on the on the basis of him being a potentially a racist. His wife is black. Yeah, but then none of that matters to these people. But, but I, I, I I understand. But you 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 get the point. That I do, I'm making, of course. Nick. It's a brilliant point. It's, How can he, you call somebody racist who's married to somebody of a different color his, than you are? His 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 children are mixed race. Like. 
This is, this is so even... Darren Sloan a racist? It's just it 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 boggles the mind that anybody could make that kind of a suggestion. Well, it's like calling you an anti semite. I, I've been called an anti semite. <laughs> okay, but how much sense does that make? Well, it it doesn't make sense. Of course. So the whole point is. This is uh, uh, just a very clumsy, brain-dead idea. It sh- First of all, it shows the quality of the people that Mr. O'Toole has surrounded himself with, which makes me question his leadership skills even further. <coughs> As a former military man, he should know that you have to get the best people in the best positions, and that does not necessarily always fall within a given rank. Sometimes a corporal can give the general the best piece of advice going. All right. It, it, you get the best intelligence from the best people, not from people who have been in rank long, the longest. And this guy is leading an army that's falling apart, losing track with what it was all about to begin with, and is looking more and more like the enemy every day. And that's really what it comes down to. Well, again, you know, this is... As when we were talking in our previous segment, our previous podcast about um, the, how much it makes sense that, or maybe we didn't, maybe we were talking about this off air. Um, it Does it make sense that if you believe, if you truly and sincerely believe that Donald Trump supporters are a powder keg just waiting to explode, then why would you pursue impeachment of Donald Trump after he's left office? Okay, giving them, like, why, if you think it's they're so dangerous, would you light the fuse? Okay. It's the same kind and of mentality. It doesn't make sense. So if you think, if you think that SOCONs are, are, are a problem, okay, then why would you light the fuse? Find a way to bring them in. And get them on the team. That's okay. the right thing to do. It's coalition building. Yes, but they're not interested in that for some reason. What they're doing now is the same thing. Now, I know you know what a fog dodger is, but I'll tell the the, the listening audience, the fog dodger was usually an ordinary seaman or an able seaman stuck right up on the very pointy end of the ship in very heavy fog. Okay. Yes, we have radar. Yes, we have different detection methods. But nothing beats the human eye. And he was there. His job was to holler back if something emerged out of the fog because he could see it first. Now, what they've done is they've got their fog dodger. He's hollering back and the captain says, no, I don't believe him. It's that kind of it's it's on that level. It's that stupid. So let me tell you also how bad the thinking has been on this. Because this is what the precedent is, okay? What they've done is they've, they've established now the principle that if a an alleged neo-Nazi oh my God. writes a check to anybody's campaign, you okay, toast. that that is grounds for that candidate, that a member of parliament to be Isn't that ejected. a great way? Now, now, now here's... If I'm Paul from, or anyone else that's actually you know been paying attention to this, I'm thinking to myself, I'm gonna I'm gonna find the ten <laughs> took the words conservative right out of my mouth. members of parliament that I want to get rid of. That's right, and I'm gonna write them a check, not because I support them, but because I don't support them. Because I want them because thrown I out. I want them gone. That's right. I, I now that that was the first thing that came to my mind when i saw that this was what a great way to clean out a party you know forget about whether it's fair to derek 